because people think it is not real like we were just saying things to bring in people and all that actually i think it's a really really good deal <laughs> you know and uh and this land right here this land you know you couldn't ask for any better land <laughs> Okay, we're back again with another awesome interview. We're going to talk to this man. I've been hearing his name when I started coming here, Navigate. I know to me, Navigate is to, you know, navigate. Anyway, so today I am here on the land again, the 5,000 acres of land free for you. Yes, I know you're watching me because you're a diasporan. You're an African anyway. So um, I have a, um, a couple of people who are, you know, um, putting up some structures on the free land. They were not skeptic. They made the decision to come to the motherland and then, you know, do something for themselves. I've seen not only residential, but I've seen other things. Now we're going to talk to uh, my big man. So I would like you to introduce yourself to my followers and where you're from in the U.S., where you were doing before you moved to the motherland so that those in your area or in your state can relate to this. Well, my name is Navigate M. Freely. Before I came to Ghana, I was living in Omaha, Nebraska, where I was employed. You know, at that time I was doing late night security. And uh, as soon as I turned 62, I said, why am I still here? You know, there's nothing stopping me from going to Ghana now. And then I saw your video on YouTube talking about the free land. And I said, that's interesting. I'm going to Ghana anyway, so that sounds like a good deal. So I'll check it out. You know, and uh, the land is maybe free, but there are administrative costs. You know, so a piece of land like the one I have right here, you know, two 100 by 100 plots that the administrative cost is like 2400 US dollars. And that covers, you know, uh, a lot of uh, governmental things like indentures and, and uh, site plans and surveys and basic stuff like that that you don't have, you wouldn't have to do. But everything else is, you know, on, you know, is, is on you. Great. Now, um, was your movement to Africa or Ghana to come settle and enjoy life after pension? Because here in Ghana, uh, you go on retirement at the age of 60. So was your intention to come and just, you know, spend your, your pension money in Ghana, just relax, see some nice, beautiful African ladies or what? Well, that was one of the, the reasons or, or two of the reasons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I had, I felt like, I felt the urge to get out of the USA. I felt like the place was killing me, you know, and I really wasn't enjoying being there at all. And, uh, you know, and I had always wanted to come to the continent. And so I said, mm, well, you know, what, what better place to retire than, 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 than the motherland, you know, because I know many other people who, when they retire, they do other things. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, I'm, and, uh, you know, coming to Ghana is much better than I thought it was going to be. You know, so it's better, you know, here than I thought it was going to be all the way around. You know, the perfect weather every day. You know, the people are fantastic. The the food is is is, is interesting. It's, it's difficult to poison Ghanaians because they grow what they eat and they eat what they grow. You know, in, in the USA, I was going to places like Walmart, you know, getting what I want, you know, and uh I felt like it was killing me. So I had to, you know, I, you know, I had to get out of there. Yeah, yeah. So like I asked early on, it was for relaxation. And then you had the intention to also invest or start a business. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, I felt like, you know, uh, coming to the motherland, I could leave a better legacy, you know, for those, you know, I leave behind, you know, here than I could in the USA, you know, and uh, and I would enjoy it more. So what, what project are you doing on the Asebo land? Oh, okay. Well, here, you know, I, like I said, I have two 100 by 100 plots. And, uh, you know, I've, I have minimum resources. You know, I, I sold my house in the USA for half the market value. 
it was an old house, you know, uh, built in 1925. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and I parlayed that, you know, uh, into what I'm doing now. Right now, we're sitting into a place that I'm going to call the Afro Aces. Afro it's going to, yes, it's going to be like a, a diner, okay. you know, a multi-purpose diner. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's coming along. And uh, I also have a block making factory over there, you know, uh, that makes hydroform interlocking bricks and uh, an outside toilet right there. And over then I have uh, my main house I'm going to be building. There's going to be four bedrooms, two bathrooms and a big hall with a three car carport. <laughs> so I parlayed all of that out of that, you know, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, and so I'm going to have about four or five different structures on this land that has a uh, money making potential you know so therefore i won't have to just rely on a pension you know i can make a little bit of money as well and uh you know here in ghana you don't have to make a fortune to live yeah. you know so anything will be great great now in in ghana we we are used to i can see you are bringing something new it is not new as in you are the first person doing it but in Ghana, we barely build a whole structure with this kind of bricks. Why did you choose this one? Do you have, is there a reason for it? You didn't want to do the normal cement blocks that we use? Well, the reason I use uh, the hydro form, hydro means water form, uh, interlocking blocks is because, you know, it takes like four wheelbarrows of, of soil and one bag of cement. So it's, it's cost effective, less cement and using less cement, you know, uh, uh, you know, cement blocks, you know, in the sun, you know, uh, absorbs heat and then it radiates that heat back into the house at night. Therefore, your air AC and your your fan will have to work harder. You know, the interlocking blocks keep the, the temperature at a constant, you know, so your your AC and your fan can can work better and. uh and these blocks are just as strong as um, concrete blocks. You know, you test them by holding them up, you know, to your to your, your waist, your, your shoulders and drop them. And if they break in more than three pieces, they're not good. Same with concrete blocks, you know. And uh, so they, they, they cost less. They look nice and they stack like Legos. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Use, use less mortar, little or no mortar. And, uh, you know, so. It, it, it was interesting. It's, it's, it's green technology mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and it's, it's sustainable. You know, it's, it's just an old, it's old technology. Basically, you know, they've been using it, this technology in Africa for centuries, you know, just not as, as focused. You know, uh, they got machines making the materials now where, you know, as uh, before you just take some straw and some clay, you know, yeah. adobe and just smack it on top of the wall, you know, and like that you know so it's a little bit more uniform now when when you came you've met a couple of people what has been the support from amongst yourselves how has it been like well me and mr baron we come to work every day you know so we support each other you know and cheer each other on and and you know and scrutinize each other you know smack each other around <laughs> whatever it takes you know so you know brothers you know they 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 do that kind of stuff you know so He's my brother, and uh, you know, and and uh, and we we here every day doing what we got to do, you know, and uh, we and we help each other, and uh, yeah, he helps me, I help him, and and we're doing the same. We want it to succeed. He wants it to succeed. I want to succeed. So, right. Um, I've had this question. I've I wanted a lot of mouth to confirm. She's spoken. Byron has spoken. And I want to know from your end too, is this a Sebu project a scam? a scam? Is it a scam? Yeah. No, it's not a scam. Because people think it is not real. Like we were just saying things to bring in people and all that. Actually, I think it's a really, really good deal. <laughs> you know? And, uh, and this land right here, this land, you know, you couldn't ask for any better land. This is, this is wonderful, a wonderful piece of land. You know, uh, I have my borehole, mm -hmm. you know, so I've drilled a borehole and, and the water is clear. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had the water tested. Okay. It's biologically safe. 
And uh, you can live out on this land right now, you know, and, and feed yourself. There's, it's just with what's out here. And, uh, you know, so that's why me and Byron come to work every day because we just like it out here. And, uh, you know, and, and and it's not a scam, you know, uh, you know, uh, they're the, you know, it, it's, 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 um, it's a project. The land comes through the, through the, 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 the chief, Nana Amamfi, uh, Nana uh, Okatachi Amamfi the seven. And, uh, so he's the chief that allocates the land and, um, we have all got to go through the, the Ghana government. You know, there's, there's governmental regulations, uh, you know, where, you know, the people from non-citizens can, you know, have the land for 55 years. You know, after 55 years, you know, the land is continued on, you know, with you or your, your, um, your ancestors, I mean, your, uh, your, your lo loved ones that you leave behind. And, uh, you know, until, you know, it continues that way. So no one is going to be thrown off their land or anything like that. You just hold the land. Uh, you know, right now, I think it's a good idea, you know, the 55 years, uh, because if, if the land was just whole wholesale, you know, and just, you know, anybody can just put the cash down and just take the land, you know, um, we wouldn't have no land. Yeah. You know, all the, all the rich people around the world, you know, that's not black will own all the land. They would just own it. They just buy it, you know, and then we'll have nothing. You know, but this this is a safety valve. So if they do uh, obtain some land, you know, uh, you know, they, they it's only leased out, you know, for as long as they're here and being a benefit, you know. But even in the USA, you know, you don't just own your land. You know, uh, if you don't pay your property taxes, you, that land is gone quick. <laughs> you know, they will take your land and they, and they will auction it off to the highest bidder. You know, if you. Even if the land, the, the house is yours. Even if you paid. You know, for the house, mm -hmm. no mortgage payment, no payments left. You, there's still property taxes every year. And the more expensive your house is, the higher the property tax is. Right. You know, so if you don't pay your yearly property tax and it accumulates, mm -hmm. pretty soon they're going to say, ah, they're going to take your land. <laughs> they're going to take your house and everything yep. and uh, and sell it to somebody else. You know, so you never own never anything. Own. And, you know, you never own the land there. But here... There's no property tax, you know, uh, so, you know, you don't have to worry about that. And here, you don't even have to get a mortgage, you know, you can just build step by step according yeah. to your resources. Yeah. If you only got a uh, 500 or or $1,000 to spend a month, that's all you spend, unless you accumulate it over a few months and then spend that, you know, you know, you can build like that here. Uh, you don't have to take out a a mortgage loan, you know, that that you pay high interest over, you know, the next 30 years. Yeah, let me let me ask this. Uh, has there been any culture shock when it comes to building in Ghana compared to the states? Primarily here, every you know, everyone builds with stone. So I've heard that in Ghana, they build the, the last forever. Now, when I was in the USA, a lot of housing construction is built with plenty of wood. You know, the walls are, you know, either wood frame primarily or metal uh, stud framed and with plasterboard, you know, walls, you know, so it's the materials are different. And, uh, you know, but here in Ghana, you know, mostly everything is stone and, and nobody's going to put their fist through a wall here. You're going to break <laughs> your hand, you know, so it, it, it's, you know, so everything is built to last forever, you know, and even even the the perimeter wall is stone and uh you know most i had privacy wood privacy fence when i was in the usa uh wood privacy fence and you know and the wind would blow them down it, you know if it's not treated well it'll rot and you know so it, it it had more maintenance towards it you know but you know the stone fence once you plaster it you so, know yeah. it, it, it's just gonna last forever yeah <laughs> All right, beautiful. So if you're watching this, there's a beautiful conversation going on. You were talking about some food you have tried, fufu and other. Which which of them is your favorite? Ah, I like banku <laughs> with pepper and and sukwe. That is that is fish, right? Well, you know, uh, President Nana Okufu Ado said that Ghana is not a paradise, but what he forgot to say, it can be. You know. Ghana can, you know, it's a paradise to me, you know, but, you know, it, 
it's still a developing country, you know, it, with a little bit more, you know, uh, infrastructure. It will be a paradise. Everybody's going to be wanting to come here because, you know, uh, what more could you ask for than perfect weather, wonderful people, good food, you know, cost effective. What do you want? You know, everything is here. <laughs> everything you need is here. <laughs> Including everything you need is here. You need everything. Yeah. This is a man to man talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, there's, there's beautiful, beautiful, there's beautiful women here and there's beautiful men as well. And, and handsome men. The, the men are just as alluring to you know as the as the women, you know, to the ladies. You know, so that's 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 a given, you know. But black people look good all over the world. I just said, coming to Africa, I said, thank God, you know, beautiful black women, you know, in the USA is not the only beautiful black women in the world because they, they're, they're all over the place. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're all over Africa. I would have to go back to the USA, you know, if, if it wasn't that, wasn't so, you know, because I know it's beautiful black women in the USA, you know, so, you know, it's kind of hard to leave all of that. But when I got here, I said, well, I'm still at home. <laughs> all right so today is tuesday 13th of july 2021 um this is a current video it's, it's nothing that we show like way back this is up to date and this is what is really happening here having a conversation with uh my uncles and my auntie you know who are on the motherland asable land you know having a feel of everything that is happening so thank you very much for being on my channel Yes. Merci. Bye bye.